Let's not get sloppy. We don't know what's behind that gate. This is a techcom mission. I want us to move fast. I want us to be efficient. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now let's clear the area. Evans, you want to start us off? Affirmative. When I reviewed Terminator Resistance back in 2019, I found its hapless waves of tin can killbots made for a disappointingly formulaic first-person shooter, and yet, somewhat depressingly, probably still the best Terminator game that I'd ever played. Annihilation Line, a DLC campaign that sprouts off from the main story's midpoint, is effectively more of the same. All of the enemies, bog-standard mission objectives, and the curiously Frogger-inspired hacking system are present and accounted for in this mindless trek through another series of crumbling concrete shooting galleries. On the plus side, its relatively brisk 4-hour runtime means it's over twice as fast. Tagging along with Kyle Reese for a sojourn behind Skynet defenses on a mission to rescue human survivors, Annihilation Line follows the same cadence of the main campaign. Hero Jacob Rivers is shuttled from objective-based sandbox mission to linear action-heavy gauntlet run to dialogue-heavy downtime at the Resistance's hideout. Rinse and repeat. I'm just mad at myself that I didn't see this coming. Its short runtime leaves no room for the light RPG-inspired moral choices from the main game, but its basic item crafting and skill upgrade system are brought across unchanged. Your main game progress doesn't copy over for the latter, but thankfully you're given a surplus of points up front to give you the running start that's needed to tackle Resistance's beefier late-game enemy types from the outset. As was the case in the main campaign, the bulk of these mechanical menaces are equipped with armor that more closely resembles tinfoil than titanium. However, their Cyberdyne system's firmware has seemingly been upgraded with deadlier aim, and I found myself far more reliant on cover and slightly more engaged in combat encounters as a result. This more considered approach to the carnage introduced some frustrating problems of its own though, since often I'd lean out to shoot around walls only to watch my pulse rifle bolts slam into the invisible edges of cover instead of the targets that were in my sights. Though slightly more threatening this time, the bulk of Annihilation Line's antagonists are identical to those faced in Terminator Resistance. There are a handful of new foes, but they're more underused than your DVD copy of Terminator Genesis. The flying HK aerial drones are easily avoided at first. We don't have enough firepower to destroy it, so keep an eye on it. Then quickly dispatched once you get your hands on the laser-guided rocket launcher. <laughs> Meanwhile, the 600 series Terminators, which are marginally tougher than the T-800s, still go down in flames faster than Edward Furlong's career in Hollywood. While much of Annihilation Line is unremarkable, there are a handful of genuinely memorable moments. In one tense crouch walk through a subway train, I was startled when switching on my thermal vision revealed intimidating lines of Terminators flanking either side, just moments before they lit up the carriage with a plasma-powered ambush that had me desperately sprinting for safety. I can see the exit. In a later assault on Skynet, tagging robot sentries for a resistance sniper afforded me the pleasure of causing T-800s to 404 from afar. Target down. And the impressive sight of a hulking Skynet excavator looming against an ashen sky was enough to briefly stop me in my tracks. Occasions like these are the exceptions though, because so much of Annihilation Line is spent churning through entirely forgettable tasks. The token escort mission, the crawl through a corridor stabbing robots with a circuit scrambling electric shiv, the mainframe computers to hack, and nondescript enemy structures to plant bombs on. It all feels as templated as the umpteenth Terminator on the Skynet assembly line, and there's little here that wasn't already covered by the main game. These menial tasks may have been a little easier to bear if you had some interesting characters to keep you company, but instead the resistance fighters you're riding with are so uniformly lacking in personality, it had me wondering if I was surrounded by a group of T-600s in disguise. In normal circumstances, I would say that the mission is straightforward. Whatever happened to levity relieving tension and the fear of death? I counted precisely one attempted joke in the whole campaign. Shotgun. Shotgun? I only brought my rifle. Oh. Terminator Resistance Annihilation Line tightens its combat to bring a slightly more compelling challenge to its firefights. 
but fails to inject any new ideas to spark any real life behind its glowing red eyes. It certainly looks great, and mowing down robotic hordes can provide some cheap thrills up to a point. But humdrum mission objectives and supporting characters that are duller than brushed steel make for a side story that's every bit as forgettable as Resistance's main quest. For more sci-fi shooting, check out our reviews of Halo Infinite's single-player campaign and chorus. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Jacob, run! <laughs> ah!